Hello, welcome along to part 22 of the Indeterminate Stuff. I am the old gaming geezer, and if you recall from last time, Chattery and Randall Kerman had crashed their space plane, the Scylla, on the surface of Lathe, and they are stuck there with no hope of rescue. Or do they have hope of rescue? Back in Kerman orbit, Jebediah Kerman, Bill Kerman are desperately trying to put together a mission to get them back. However, also on somewhere else on the surface of Lathe is Nelvis and Cadmus Kerman. And they think they have a plan. But first, before they do anything, they need to get back to their mothership, the Satanta, which is in a very inclined and eccentric orbit around Lathe. Um, these guys have a plan. It's going to cost a lot of fuel. It's going to be a little bit dangerous. But they may be able to save the two guys in the other plane. So, Elvis and Cadmus, Kerman, are now flying their space plane, the, the uh, Charybdis, back up to up through the clouds on Lathe, and they're going to head back to the Satanta now. And so, what is the plan? Well, they've been talking to Mission Control, and the plan is simple. They're going to... Nelvis and, 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 and Cadbury are going... Or Chadmus are going to go back to the Satanta. Uh, Chadmus is going to get out. Nelvis is going to stay, and he's going to refuel everything in the ship, and he's going to fly back down and pick up one of the two guys down below and fly back up. Dock, rinse, and repeat. That all sounds very simple. It's a space plane, uh, so it can land and take off from lathe, no problem. It's been designed to do that. However, what it has not been designed to do is do that multiple times. I am very worried that we may have more unplanned disassemblies. Boys back in mission control are like, this is really dangerous, guys. Really? Can we do this? Can you not wait a couple of years until Jebediah and Bill get there? But uh, Nelvis, Nelvis was chosen for this mission because uh, he was... He's a... You know, he's the guy on the spot. He's used to making decisions away from home base. Um, so we think that that's what he's going to do. Um, he's now trying to trying to match orbits with the Satanta and the space plane because they're both in completely terrible orbits. This is going to be a very fuel-expensive rescue, but we think that it's probably the best way to do it. Uh, it means we can still... Um, we can still complete our mission, but we're going to have to need fuel from home. So the Satanta now is burning a whole rake, of, was about to start burning a whole rake of fuel to get it into an orbit where they can rendezvous with the space plane. And there we are, burning away. Now this took quite a, quite a long time to do this because I need to spend a lot of fuel to get the orbits to, to close enough that I could do a rendezvous. Uh, because the space planes don't actually have a hell of a lot of fuel. Well, surprisingly enough, the one that's crashed on the surface of Lathe is full of fuel, but there's nothing that we can do about that right now, uh, because, well, there's nothing we can do. So here we have the Satantas getting into an orbit, matching its orbit now closely with the space plane, and then we're going to bring the space plane in. Uh, the orbits aren't exact, but, you know, a little bit more tweaking later, and we're going to be get them... We're going to be getting them very, very, very close. And here we have the space plane now doing its quick burn just to um, just to get their orbits aligned. And there we go. So, short amount of uh, maneuvering later, we finally get the space plane approaching the Satanta. And we're actually going to have to dock. And if you remember from previous videos, we have that terrible problem of the docking alignment indicators on the nav ball uh, but you know it doesn't matter we get close enough here and we're um we're zeroing out our relative velocity selecting our docking port opening the docking port on the space plane and let's get in there and dock so again i can as you can see from the nav ball the 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 alignment indicators are totally off uh, the actual alignment of the docking ports but i slowly and securely managed to get it in there to dock very slowly. <laughs> it's uh, not an easy thing to dock these planes, but it's possible. I've, I've got a lot of practice at it now. So uh, uh, Cadmus Kerman gets out of the space plane and he takes all of the science with him. Yes, he, yes, he takes all of the science with him and he brings it back 
It disconnects there, and he's going to fly up to the main pod. Well, first he's going to check to see can he grab the science out of this B9 aerospace uh, science pack there. This aeros this B9 part predates being able to take science from parts. But anyway, we're going up there now to the pod. We're going to be very careful going around those uh, solar panels because we have to remember that we are not at home to Mr. Cockup. No, we are not at home to Mr. Cockup. At least not this episode. And so after fully refusing, refusing, refueling the space plane, we are going to bring it back down to the surface of Leith, and we are going to try and pick up one of the survivors of the crash. Well, luckily, everybody survived the crash. So Nelvis Kerman is going to pilot this thing down. Um... I'm not going to show you the whole thing, uh, because it's a fairly standard return, as usual. And so here we are approaching the island where the crash site is. Uh, we're approaching the crash site. Nelvis is going to do a quick flyby first, just to check out the lay of the land, and decide where he's going to land. Unfortunately, they've crashed on a rather unfortunate area that's a bit lumpy. Um, it, um, you know, the terrain was probably the cause of the crash. Um, I can see those flat bits below me there where I probably should have tried to land. But, you know, well, it's too late now. So, uh, Nelvis does a quick flyby. He's going to take a look to see what the ground is like, where the boys are. As we fly past, you can see there's uh, an issue with uh, some elements that are under the surface. But anyway, we circled around and we came in from the north. We're flying south now. We're going to land down and kind of basically land on that uphill right in front of us. That will slow us down pretty well. The plane handles really well in the light, thin, Lathian atmosphere. And uh, I'm just trying to bleed off some speed now. We're at about 60, 65 meters per second, trying to get it slower than that. And we're slowly going down. I'm flaring ever so slightly, increasing my flare there. I'm very, very worried about this plane now coming down after what happened the last time. But we get it down, and I'm touching the brakes. I don't want to brake too hard because I don't want the plane to fall over so early. So we get there. We're a bit far away, but I'm just going to turn around and taxi back. But I'm not going to show that. Um, so we, I just taxied back. So out comes uh, Chadbury Kerman. Sorry, Chad Chattery Kerman. And Chattery Kerman is going to get back into the plane and he's going to take off. So got to lower the landing gear first. So Chattery can do the old run and jump and face plant onto the side of the plane that we have to do to get back onto these planes. After somebody, somebody, I'm not going to say who, forgot to put ladders on the planes. I'm, I'm looking at Jeb. Thinking about Jeb when I say that. Because it must have been Jeb. Because who else could it have been? Wait, it can't have been Jeb. Jeb was on Duna when these planes were built. Damn it! Well, anyway. <laughs> Nelvis, Nelvis uh, and Chattery wave goodbye to the crash site and they start heading back up into orbit. We'll have to come back down again to pick up Randall later. So this started out as a fairly standard uh, space plane orbital flight. Um, we take off and we're leaving the crash site behind. Uh, as I said, it started off as a fairly normal orbital flight, but as I got higher and faster... Um, things started to change. Now, you've watched my periapsis in the orbit HUD at the bottom of the screen. I'm still in the atmosphere, but I'm already getting a periapsis above the surface. So, I, I, wow, I have never, I've never seen this on Kerbin before. Maybe it's because Lay this is quite small. And so, eventually, I get basically I'm at orbital speed, but I'm still in the atmosphere. Um... And so, at this point, I try to get my rocket engines, start switch over to rocket mode, and I start to climb, and my, as you can see, my apoapsis is rising significantly. Um, and I got it up quite high, and I'm now kind of... So I figure I got it up quite high, um, and so I cut my engines, but it's dropping really fast, because I'm still so low in the atmosphere. I'm only 20, 20 kilometers up, so the air is slowing me down really, really fast. So I start burning again to, to raise it up some more because I don't want to crash land back down on back down on lathe again. Uh, but that's interesting to know. I'll have to think about that for my next flight and how that's going to work. Um, I hadn't really expected, but anyway, we get we I get into orbit. Uh, there's a lot of spend a lot of fuel on by the Satanta to do a plane change to get to get in there uh, because you know this shuttle doesn't have a hell of a lot of fuel on it. 
Uh, but eventually we get in, slow down, get to the Satanta. We've done our rendezvous with the beautiful jewel in the background, looking fantastic as it always does. We have to get a closer look at Jewel at some point. So when we come into dock, uh, I'm not going to discuss the um, alignment issues with my thing, but we get dock, no problems, uh, bar our usual one, and uh, here we go, we dock. Although when we do touch, we start wobbling around for a while, so we'll wobble around for about 10 or 15 seconds there. Uh, I haven't seen that kind of wobble in this game since I know, 0 0.18, but eventually we get the dock. We're docked. We're docked. So uh, chat, chat, Chattery gets out. And he goes back to the safety of the Satanta, the relative safety of the Satanta. And uh, so next on our list is to refuel and send, send the space plane back to pick up Randall, who's still stuck on the surface. And so as we uh, jet away from the Satanta, again, we see the beautiful jewel in the background. Uh, we will be moving down. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. I really love this ship. I know I keep showing it and keep showing it. And there we go. We're closing our um, docking bay, our enclosed docking bay. Love those things. Anyway, so we came down. Uh, we didn't really, I didn't want to show it because it took a while. Um, flying space planes down. It just takes time and I didn't really want to show it. So we're coming down to, we're now 17 kilometers away from the crash site. Um, at this stage, I am looking forward to land in the opposite direction that I landed the last time. Um, just because it, it's very convenient for me to do that, uh, from the angle I came in at. Um, so I'm, I'm basically gliding in. I didn't use my engines at all to bring myself down here. Um, so I'm trying to slow down and fly down, um... And I'm getting a bit worried now. I'm looking at the terrain in front of me. And I'm going too fast to land at this point. Um, and I'm four kilometers away now and closing. Um, I'm too fast. The ground is undulating too much. And I'm really beginning to worry that this is not a good place to land. Um, and I've got those mountains ahead of me. And at this point, I just like, you know what? I'm just going to wave off. I think I'm just going to wave off. This is not working. Um, yeah, let's power up the engines and let's get out of here. The ground is too sloped. So uh, basically, I, I, I flew out around over the ocean um, and came back in uh, from the west. And I'm going to land actually in not too dissimilar landing profile from when we crashed. But this time I'm being extra careful because when we crashed the Scylla here a couple of episodes ago, I was, uh, last episode, I was, um, I was very cocky. But uh, I put the Charybdis down quite close. Uh, very happy with where it came down, how it came down. I mean, a bit of a hard landing, but you know what? We managed to walk away from it. So we're going to taxi over to the Scylla. We're quite close to the crash site. And you see there a glitch in the uh, a glitch in the ground plane where a couple of pieces just fell right through it. Uh, I've seen quite a few of those glitches as I've been on lathe, I must say. So we get in real close. Um... Bring ourselves to a stop, and I angle the plane, so I'm pointing in the direction that I want to take off at. Hit the brakes. Randall gets out of the Scylla and says goodbye to, to what was supposed to be his uh, wonderful plane. And we're going to plant a flag here on the surface. Here lies the wreck of the Scylla. <laughs> Caught between a rock and a hard place. A rack and a hard place? Oh, well. Uh, all souls survived. So that's okay. Tough mission, but we got it. We Everybody survived. We're going to save Randall. It's going to be the end. But that spelling mistake, a rack in a hard place, that's going to be there forever. Until the end of time. And Randall gets back into his ship. Uh, into the Charybdis, which came to take him home. And the Charybdis repairs to leave, fires his engines. Goodbye, great crash site. We shall never see you again. Well, we probably never will see him again, but maybe we'll land here at some point in the future. I don't really know. You can't really tell. And so we uh, take off. This is, uh, again, very standard mission, very standard flight. You see one of the moons of Jewel off in the distance there. I don't know which one it was. And we leave the crash site behind, and we see the, the beautiful Jewel rise as we took off. Um, I just thought I'd show it because... 
It's a beautiful jewel rise. Love jewel rise. So anyway, we get to back to the Scylla. Sorry, to the Satanta. It's the Scylla we left in pieces on the surface of the lathe. Uh, so we're coming into the Satanta now, getting close. We're going to turn around now and uh, angle ourselves to the docking port. We've already opened our inline docking port on the Charybdis. And so this is... Uh, I've shown so many dockings of this thing, I'm just going to basically show you some nice highlights as we dock. And uh, nothing really too fancy. We get in, we dock. I have my problems with the nav ball and the alignment indicators, but we dock. And there we go. We're, di we're in. We're docked. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this next bit at a uh, much higher speed because I'm going to take all of the fuel out of the Charybdis and put it back into the Sedanta. Uh, all of the monopropellant as well. And uh, because I'm going to dump the Charybdis here in orbit, I'm going to take uh, Randall and Nelvis out and get them into the Satanta as well. Uh, the Charybdis, as I said, I'm dumping it here in orbit. I don't need it anymore. Um, it's just going to be extra weight, and it's going to be off-center weight as well, so I'm going to dump it. I'm going to leave it here. Our next trip is out to um, Tylo with this ship uh, as we undock finally from the Charybdis, I think. Are we undocking? Yeah, there we go. We've undocked finally from the Charybdis. The Satanta will be moving out to Tylo. Um... And that'll be in the next episode as we say goodbye to the Charybdis, this great plane which has served us so well, rescued Randall and Chattery Kerman. This is the old gaming geezer signing off. Good night, farewell, adieu.